for joining me. This is Meg Ormiston, and I am really excited to do this module with you about math and technology. I have some brand new things to share with you. And we're going to start off with a section on growth mindset. I know math teachers, it drives you crazy when parents come in and go, oh, I'm just not good at math, and, and my, my son or daughter is not good at math, and they just give up. That starts about third grade, everybody. And um, for a number of years, one of my favorite jobs I ever had was a math coach as an elementary in an elementary building. But I'm telling you, this starts very early. And people get a fixed mindset about things. Oh, I'm bad, I'm bad, I'm bad. You know, I didn't get through third grade math very well, so I must be bad at math. You, I know you hear it. So this whole concept of growth versus a fixed mindset. A growth mindset is, hey, if I keep working hard, if I keep trying, Things can get better. My brain, I can, I can work with my brain. But if you look on the right, let's just focus on the right. I think this is what's happening in our classrooms. That we, at the very bottom, we are creating learned helplessness. I, I look at that as, I've just taught my lesson. I, have, I haven't even taken a breath or turned around, and all of a sudden, hands shoot up. They didn't try to process. They didn't think through it. We taught them learned helplessness where if you look to the left, you have grit. We want, we don't really want to talk about grit. We want to develop grit by talking about this growth mindset. And this can be in anything from gym class to the football field to the math classroom. So the whole concept of growth mindset is something that is really out there now. Class Dojo, for example, has a series of five videos uh, that talk directly to students. Now they look kind of primary, but I've seen them work really well in a high school class in where the where these little characters, the dojos, they come and they talk about, you know, growing your brain and working through it. So I really suggest these as resources. Well as I said that, just so you know, I have captured all of these resources for you on your resource page. So don't worry about writing down URLs, just write down maybe or, or dot them. I really believe in personal professional development, growing your own personal professional development. And that's a huge part of the whole growth mindset. If our teachers are not learning, they don't have a growth mindset. So this whole concept of personalizing PD, that's what you're doing with me right now. I hope you're in your jammies. I'm in my slippers as we do this, but we're personalizing our professional development experience. Two big things. I'm not making up this mindset things. This actually, these two books are actually bestsellers, and they are on right now this week. They are on the New York Times bestseller list. This is big stuff. If you are a parent, you have to pick this up because it really talks about how we're talking to our students, and I mean, excuse me, our children, and then it also talks about our students. So. This one, these two books are excellent. Easy reads, although you wouldn't think a psychology book is, but they're, oh, it's excellent, both of them. I love this visual. This visual, I think, should be hanging in the halls, in the walls of every classroom in every school. And really, so kids understand, okay, I'm working really hard right now. This is hard. I'm disappointed. But look, and where everybody in the whole building, all the adults, and all the students are talking in this growth mindset. I've been in these buildings. It's exciting, but you have to start. And let's start in your math classroom. This, wow. Now, I showed you those two other books. Sorry, I know you're so busy teaching. It's hard to say, oh, sure, I'll read another book. But wow, this is about mathematical mindsets. So it takes the whole like big picture of mindsets, and it puts it into your classroom super practical. I might even say for you math people, jump to this one first. Super practical. Things you can do tomorrow. Things like doing homework in a different way. I mean, I've only, I think I'm on chapter two. I have already picked up so many practical strategies, and that's what I'm always about bringing to you. So this one, put it on your must-read list. Um, not a hard read, but very, very practical. And there's a huge appendix that I think you would find very helpful for kind of restructuring your uh, homework and things like that. So I am really enjoying that. I want to always bring you the, the best resources. That's the best one I've seen in a long time. I'm huge in connecting beyond the walls of the classroom. <gasps> Woo! Why would you do that? Because when we do that, our student work improves because they know 
that they are doing work that goes to a, a broader audience. Now take a look at this. This project I love talking about, the Sugar Kills Us project. And um, there's my Bill, uh, my friend Bill Ferrer, <laughs> and he's a horrible parent, and his kids write about it. It's, he's not a horrible parent. He just gave his second grade daughter a Hershey bar, and they, they, the Sugar Kills group, his students, are counting sugar. If you look, I love the visual representation. On the left in the blue, you should have 24 grams of sugar. In one Hershey bar, you just blew your sugar for the day and they write about it. So you're tying a little bit of science, you got a little math in there and making fun of their teacher. Then they linked me out to a site I didn't know existed, Calorie King. Now I thought that would be very handy and then I thought, boy, 210 calories in a Hershey's bar, I gotta do a lot more uh, laps around the block. So um, I just thought that was interesting. Calorie King, it looks like you can put anything in and it's gonna tell you the calories. Maybe we don't wanna know. All right, but here's one of their big motivating things, why they like and believe to connect beyond the classroom is because of this. This is called their cluster map. This tracks every person that has come to their blog from every part of the globe, and this jazzes them. They come in, oh, look at this. They actually try to track me sometimes, and they send me, the, Bill sends me a text, and he's like, we think you're in Texas talking about us today. Are you? It's funny because they watch the real-time data to see who's coming to the site. They are connecting. Look at this. People are coming from all over the United States and all over the world to see the work uh, that middle schoolers are writing about sugar. This, I want to showcase your students next time. Connecting beyond the walls of the classroom, you automatically up what you're getting from students, quality-wise. All right, I can't live, those of you that know me, um, I can't live without Twitter. For me, this is my number one source of personal professional development. Now, pulled it up. I've, I'm, I'm studying personalized learning right now. The Seesaw chat. I'll, I'll hit Seesaw later for you. Plug us in. That's Bill. That's what Bill is tweeting about. And then the whole right column is just talking about grit. This is how I learn every single day. I'm going to challenge you. How do you learn every single day? Don't say you're too busy. You're too busy not to do. You're, you, you could never be too busy because these people are giving you gems all day long. For example, getting ready for today. I have, I have a math presentation technology, but I want to freshen it up. So I went to math chat and boy, there's people just sharing resources. So back to the point, what do you want with professional development? Why are you spending this time with me? You want it personal. You don't want to be herded into the auditorium and have some expert read their PowerPoint slides to you. You want to do exactly what we're doing now. And for me, it all started, it all starts with Twitter. So when I was on Math Chat, I found a ton of online calculators. So I thought I'd start there. I'd just start somewhere. So online calculators. There's a whole group that's, um, there's geometry calculators, there's area calculators, there's all different things that you can, that are already out there. This app is free. And this app is free. And there's a lot more of them. I thought that was interesting. The Baptist Church is in there, but whatever. And these are apps made by this group. There's calculators out there. And what we need to do is help students realize, yeah, we know there's these calculators are out there. But what does it mean in restructuring our lessons? Found a ton of new resources I would never have found if I had not been wandering around math chat for you. And so what I want to do is bring you those things. I, maybe you already know about math snacks. And there's videos, there's teaching tools, there's all different things in here. And they're short. And they're designed for middle school kids. They're short little, um, oh, I'm going to say like boosters or tutorials or just another way to explain it. Great resource to share with your students. Common Sense Media is a group that really focuses on digital citizenship, um, digital learning online, and I found a whole bunch more. I'm really looking at this Reflex Math, and I'm not sure if I like it yet. I'd love your opinion. Reflex Math is supposed to help with fluency. So... I'm not sure there is a fee for reflex math. A lot of, a lot of, I try to show you everything free, but as I was digging a little deeper, I found there's a little bit for free 
but really what you want, there is a fee. So there, you have all these resources, so you can just look around. Now, there's a lot of people that blog about math. I didn't realize that. I found, I found the top nine math question websites. I just thought you might enjoy that. These bloggers are talking about everything related to math. And this one about statistics. We've got one that more for the younger kids, but a lot of good resources here on bedtime math. I'm going to guess just by a quick read, it's a math teacher that's also a mom. Um, or dad, I shouldn't say that. Um, this one, TED Talks. There's TED Ed Talks, there's TED Talks. This one is Conrad Wolfram, but we'll come back to him later. Um, Edutopia, another great source for you for anything educational. This is the George um, Lucas Foundation. Just quick little bites for you. Take a look at that. This one's a popular one. Math fluency is a hot topic. 14,000 plus shares on this one article. This one, Math Manipulatives. This article was cool because it went, it talked about math manipulatives on screen as well as concrete ones and how important it is. I thought that was something I would have, I wouldn't have thought of. And so they do some screen stuff and they do some paper stuff. And I think that's really important that we don't lose the fact we do need paper in a math class, even if we do have digital tools. This one, I actually spent a lot of time here. And Yummy Math. I would love to meet this person. Yummy Math takes a, a lot of sports, a lot of sports, and ties it to math. This, there's stuff, there's quick little things you could open up your lessons with that are already prepared. There's lessons, strategies, all different things. But look across the top. He's got stuff for third grade, fourth grade. He or she um, has all different things in here. And wow, just um, the quick ones that I looked at, I really liked. Here's an example of one. Um, the, if you're a football fan, um, the NFL changed a rule. And then how does it tie? And look at this, what he's giving you. Think how many hours that just saved you right there. Think about that. And you got the, the activity, you've got different documents. I think that's just fantastic. And I hope we see more and more people sharing like this. Um, there are membership opportunities, but what was it, $20 a year? You really have to think about that. $20 for quality things. Look around first and see what you think. But the, the, the cost of diapers, all different things. So I just thought it was worth me sharing. I always try free, but this one might be worth it. And of course, I come from Chicago, so let's talk Blackhawks. Hmm, anytime. Um, here's another one, how to trick, trick or treating. That, that's funny, and I thought, mm-hmm, some kids would be really into that. Um, Here's somebody else that's over on Twitter in the Teacher Studio. Again, another resource that was new to me. And so when I see something like that, a lot of times I'll follow that person because I don't know, I, I, you know, and I make that connection. So hopefully I can continue to learn from them. This one's interesting. I'm going to make that connection back to that growth mindset book I told you about with mathematics. This that she teaches at Stanford She's also in charge of this U cubed, and there's tons of resources on here. I think they're all free. And here's this is the author of the book I referred to earlier, Joe. And I started following her on Twitter. She's constantly, I'm sure she's a team to help her share, constantly sharing great information. Gizmos, again, one of my favorites. Unfortunately, Gizmos is it's not free. But a lot of gizmos are tied to your textbook. So they've made a deal with the textbook, so you get gizmos. So for sure there's a 30-day trial, but gizmos are interactive math. I would say definitely math and science. Um, interactives is the best way I can say them. But they're good. They're high quality. So you might want to check in your math book, if, especially if you have a digital textbook, to see if they have, if you also have access to the full gizmos. Um, what is a full gizmos today, 30 day, at least check it out for the 30 day free trial. Did you see I was timed? I only had three minutes and 44 seconds to do something. All right. Now, again, I'm going back to that fixed or growth mindset. Critical to be talking about that. What's your math mindset? And I thought that was cool. And again, here we have another blogger and tons more resources for math. This one was new to me. It's tied somehow to Amazon. And it, it's a re I think it's trying to get like more people talking about math. I don't know if it's tied to uh, STEM, STEAM, 
I'm not sure. I really need to dig further. But I thought it was interesting. The connection I made was growth mindset, Amazon, and math. Hmm. Math with math. Math with Matthew. And he's trying to increase interest. And he's singing and he's dancing and he's doing all crazy things about math. But look, maybe you don't have to start from scratch. Um, here's what's the value of pi. Start your lesson that way. And the, the value of these sites, and the reason I included them, is you don't have to go out and find all these things. I'm looking closer all of a sudden. TV pilot. Hmm. You better dig in and find out more about that. Teaching channels, always a classic. They, they have professional crews that come into rooms to do the videotaping. So you've got good quality audio, video, and lessons, and standards, and everything wrapped together. So go search for a topic, and you can see some lessons. New to me again, mashup math, inspiring math education. But what I always look, again, this was tied to growth mindset, so that's why I went there. But again, I always look in the upper right-hand corner for pricing, and I didn't see that. I was pretty excited. Again, this one is a lot of videos, some, some lessons. But what caught me is 5,000 plus people have watched one video. They're pretty funny. 10 marks, again, uh, it was purchased by Amazon. So Amazon is really trying to get into the education market. Lots, I, I, I need to, again, dig deeper, but I wanted to make sure I brought that to you. Take a look at the headings across the top. You have Math Chat, Algebra 2 Chat, 6th Grade Math. There's people on Twitter just giving you resources all day. A bunch of what I just shared with you came directly from the Twitter feed. Now this one, of course you, what we all know, the Khan Academy. But the Khan Academy, a lot of people don't know there's a coaching feature in Khan Academy. Where the coaching feature, basically your students nest under you, you're the coach. The data that comes out of there for free is unlike any data I've ever seen from any paid source. It's really, really good. So make sure your students connect with you so you become their coach. Here we go. Here's Now let's say you teach Algebra 2. Look at this. They're giving you the people to connect with. That's what you need, especially if you're new to Twitter, to make those. go ahead and make those connections. Now this one, <laughs> I kind of put it there at the end. I want you to know about it if you don't know about it already because I'm telling you, your students know about it. What this is, is you take your phone, you get the free app, you snap a picture with your phone of a problem, and it walks you through how to solve it. Not just the answer, but how to solve it. That's photo math. And the very last, so you need to know about that. And I would take it right out and show the class, hey, look, I just learned about photo math. You know, all the faces will fall, and then we'll talk about uh, changing math instruction. How do we work? When do we use photo math? When do we don't? And Wolfram Alpha. This one hails from the U of I, and it is based in Champaign. It calculates almost anything. It's a, it's it's Conrad Alpha um, Wolfram made it to compute anything that can be computed is here. It is unbelievable. It has add-ons, it has features, it has apps, it has data. It's incredible. So with that, I am going to leave you today with, I hope, a whole pile of new resources. And if you want to contact me or you have a great resource to share, it's meg at megormiston.com. Thank you for joining me.